Welcome to the Hospitality MD podcast. We are back with a regular interview, actually. We've been doing a lot of live shows, um, but haven't recorded it in recent months a whole lot of pre recorded traditional podcast content. So, with that being said, it's my honor to go back into that by having some great people on the show. Gina and Lisa from the KTGY Simeone. Yes. Uh, did I say it right? Yes, you did. Simeone yeah. Deary Design Group. Got That's it. a mouthful. Yeah. Can you say it cohesively for me so the people can hear it without me butchering it? KTGY Simeone Deary Design Group. Boom. There we go. <laughs> okay. And we also have Tom here. Tom, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. I'm glad to be here. Awesome. Me too. I'm glad to have you. I you don't always do the uh, the traditional podcast recording stuff, but you're you're going to be integral because we're actually going to be showing you guys. And if you're listening on audio only, by the way, you might want to tune in on YouTube as an alternative if you can, because we're talking to designers and architects, and we're going to be looking at stuff. Uh, so the the visuals will definitely help. So if you're tuning in on audio, consider switching over. Um, and while you're there, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. So Gina and Lisa, thank you guys so much for being here. Y'all are coming at us from, from my hometown and we're, you know, where I'm from Chicago. So, uh, that's great. I love that city and I love your contributions to that city. Um, we were talking off record a little bit about the honor that it is for me to be sitting down with them today because I've been in a lot of spaces that they've designed and they've poured their hearts into, and it's made me feel at ease. It's made me feel comfortable. It's made me feel important or valued. It's like all these different emotions that you feel when you go into a space and I've experienced it and now I'm talking to them. So I'm just super honored. So thank you guys again. So I want to just start by asking you guys a question before we look at, look at some of your designs, but you specialize particularly in hospitality products, right? Um, so you could have like designed any, you could have specialized in anything, right? So what was like a drawing point for you to be like, we like restaurant, hotel, that type of uh, projects to work on? Individually, we have our different regions. I, this is Gina Derry. And personally, for me, I love the ritual of dining. So, and I, put myself to college as a waitress. And I think Lisa has similar stories too. Yeah. We both worked in the industry. We both fell in love with it. Um, we both fell in love with the experience that you have when you're in a restaurant. And I think we wanted to continue that. And once we started designing restaurants, it just kind of snowballed into hotels, uh, amusement parks, spas, you know, it kind of was the beginning of something. So that's why I particularly like it. But. I, yeah, I think I echo what Gina said. Um, this is Lisa. So I I feel, um, I think as as that started to snowball from restaurants where we started into hotels, you know, that, that feeling, to, uh, Kyle, that you were saying about that whole guest experience and the feedback that we would get from guests, you know, um, this is kind of a second career for Gina and I. My first degree was in psychology. So for me, getting um, getting that kind of, getting to touch the guest and getting to get that feedback from a guest in, in a very, through a creative medium was the best of both worlds for me because I always was pulled towards a creative um, field, never thought, you know, back when I started school that I could really make money from it. <clears throat> but um, that for me was really the, the crossroads for two passions. And so that, that really getting that customer experience and being able to use that psychology background partnered with the, um, the creativity and things really have come full circle as time has gone by and the evolution of hospitality more so currently, things have, have that experiential component has really come to the forefront for us. Yeah, I, I love both of your answers, by the way. And I, I think it's great to that you have a psychology background because it's like you're like using that to, to craft. You can 
manipulate it to be what you want people to feel and what you want their emotions to be, which is awesome. Cause that's the, that's the whole point of design, I would think. And then on the other hand, um, you know where the server station should go if somebody tells you to put it in another area or the ice machine's in the wrong place because you've lived it. Um, you know where things need to go when you're designing a restaurant. And at least when you sit down with owners and developers, you can actually say like, yeah, I know you might want it over here, but I actually know in where this is supposed to go or what the optimal design would be for, uh, for somebody who's working in it. Because it's not just the guests, but it's also the people working there, right? Well, Kyle, you said that you felt comfortable in a project. And um, that's because certain hospitality form um, does follow function. And a place has to function. And I know that sounds um, a little unexciting right now. But I mean, really, if they have to function before we uh, turn our craft and turn it into an actual um, amazing experience for someone. So we spend a lot of time uh, planning and programming and uh, making sure that um, they, the customer and the people that are serving and uh, the people that are uh, running the hotel all have paths that cross and that we kind of keep that comfort level going. We all know we've been in spaces that don't do that and it's, uh, you don't enjoy the, you don't enjoy your time in them. Right, it could be the mm -hmm. most beautiful yeah. space in the world but like Gina said, mm -hmm. if it doesn't function, if it's got a terrible floor plan or sight lines or things don't flow, it, it doesn't matter how good the design is. I wish we had some bad examples because I want to, <laughs> now I'm just personally curious and like <laughs> how bad something could really be. Or like, now I'm thinking back to like, have I ever been in a place that didn't function right? I absolutely yeah. have. And I've, I've worked in hotels, um, for about five years now. And I've worked in one hotel in particular that's coming to mind where it's like for the guest, for the staff, things were confusing. The design was very circular. Like, um, all of the hallways on every floor was a complete circle that you would find yourself back to where you were. And, um, the never ending <laughs> loop. <laughs> like a nightmare. Yeah. That I had. And, and there was a, the guest elevator was on one side of the circle and the service elevator was on the other side of the circle. And the guests were constantly finding themselves inside of the service elevator. Oh my God. Making their way down to the employee areas and all of the above. And it was just such a inconvenience for both the staff and the guest. Um, so that's, I'm just getting flashbacks right now to like what well, an inconvenience, inconvenience yes, but also I'm surprised there's no lawsuit because someone slipped on a, on a wet rag on the, in the yeah. elevator or something like, cause that's really like, that's also the importance of design too. Right. So for the owners and developers, it's like, listen, you better, you know, spend the money and do the right thing when it comes to the design, because that's everything Absolutely. that's workman's comp. That's a lot like that's money for the whole business is, is, uh, leaning on the design of it. Would you agree? Absolutely. I mean, we have to know our craft from beginning to end and that goes all the way down to the coefficient of friction of a tile, you know, and the slip resistant factor of those things and how much grout should go percentage of grout should go in a shower. You know, those, I mean, we're not just selecting paint colors because we think they look good. You know, we, we have really have to know what we're doing. Tom, I think we have both had the same reaction to that. Yeah, we love that. I'm like, that's killer. Like you guys yeah. are pros. <laughs> um, so I want to look at these designs now because I just love what you guys do. And I just, maybe you could just help me understand what your thought process was, the psychology of it. Sure. Um, tell me about the grout too. I want to know all of it. Um, <laughs> It's it's so, just really interesting. And now I'm going to learn this stuff and I'm going to take it. And I'm going to be thinking about it as I go into places and stuff. Um, that's why I like doing this podcast because I learned so much from doing these interviews. So hopefully people who are listening can follow along on this journey. And and for those that are listening, I am going to pop up the um, designs that were provided to us here now. So you guys can go ahead and, and view that um, or switch over to YouTube and, and check it out um, or 
you know, watch it again. Watch it on Spotify and come back on YouTube later. Um, so Brush Creek Ranch is in Wyoming. It's a project we've been working on for 15 years. We were there um, on the in the very beginning when the, our, our client, uh, Bruce White, uh, bought the property. And it's progressively grown from 30,000 acres to well over 100,000 acres. And this property, um, we could talk about all day, but I don't want to because we have other things to talk about. It's huge. But this particular piece of it is a... Um, it is a farm to table uh, restaurant and creamery, brewery, distillery, uh, wine tunnel with 10,000 uh, different kinds of wines. It's a journey, it's an experience. You walk in and you are, uh, even though you're eating in this like beautiful barn, the, the finishes are very upscale. It's very authentic to the land. The Our client is extremely, um, Serious, serious about conservation and also being true and authentic to it. So when you see materials are usually repurposed except for anything that like, you can touch. So um, there is a, four greenhouses here, goats, <laughs> goes on and on. So you, when you go here, you're getting this most fabulous um, high-end dining experience in a very approachable location that really talks a lot about Wyoming. I'm sold. I want to go now. Yeah, it's amazing. I, this is incredible. I've my best meal of my entire life there. Um, Gina, can you tell me about the tunnel there? The yes, the tunnel. So there's a wine, there, there's a, the, the dining um, room itself in the kitchen is, it looks like it's disconnected from the event center. But what happens is there's a wine tunnel that connects them to underground. Um, and in that wine tunnel, you can branch off into different areas and experience different wine cellars. So there's the general wine cellar, then there's the you know hundred point cellar. There's also a spirit vault, which has is a secret kind of you can't get in unless you push these several doors, and that is amazing. That's filled with um, very high end uh, bourbons and whiskeys and um, hard to find um, cordials. So it's. It's just, it, it's kind of, a, it, it's a slow process that slowly unfolds. And at the very end of the tunnel is where all the the, um, the pastry chefs and the, the bakers are, and they make all their fresh bread for the project. So it's kind of like the end of the tunnel. So the uh, this is a catering events and a restaurant? Yeah, so I'll, there's a restaurant piece which is in a building on its own, which is, uh, they're all these beautiful bars, beautiful kind of uh, very Wyoming architecture. And so that's one area. And then right, if you're to walk up to the property, there's that's when you see the distillery and the creamery and gotcha. all the other subcategories. And then next to that is the, um, is going to be your event hall, but they're not really connected. But they are connected underground. So you can go from... Uh, oh, okay. So this yeah. is underground. Right. Yeah. You know, it's a little hard to explain. That's why we were showing the tunnel. No, this um, is... Now it makes sense to me, no, yeah. knowing that... Okay. So you see one thing went above ground, and then underground to a whole another experience. How ex what a What a piece of real estate that is. I, I know. Yeah. Ask. And this is a small part of the ranch. Yeah. yeah. It just shows the commitment. There's also three... These greenhouses they have is where all they bring the fresh vegetables in. There's also steering cattle on the um the property so this uh, the meat comes right from the property oh wow so you're eating when you ate that meal there you were like literally not even farm to table like backyard to table yeah that's right like, right wow. wow yeah how much does it how much does a meal cost there do you know wow there's i'm sure you got it for well, free, you know what <laughs> i didn't pay for it i don't know <laughs> I, I would hope that, i would hope that I you got a free meal on it Actually, the Brush Creek Ranch is a, uh, it is, you go there, it's a basically a dude ranch, um, how most people would think of it. So you go there and it's all inclusive. But I will tell you. Wow. Very. Uh, so there's very lodging accommodation? But it's worth it. <laughs> there's, is, there's. Is there a lodging accommodation? Oh, yes. Yeah, there's so much more. If you, should we go to the web, our website and see the whole thing? Uh, yeah, let's go. Well, I could. I said hop over. Uh, so while he's doing that, I just have a question. If you could show the um, the dining room again, I just have a question about that. Sure. Um, because that is just stunning. And 
my question to you is, do you like help them with the FF and E procurement? Like I'm noticing like the table chargers, I'm noticing the really nice glassware. I'm noticing the salt and pepper shakers. Like that is so, con it seems to me very well connected with the design. Is that something that you consult on or is that a part of the design or yeah, um, those auxiliary elements are like, like my eyes are drawn yeah. to like the table settings and I think it's really relevant. We work hand in hand with, uh, who is actually Bruce himself and Jean-Luc who is his co-CEO. And, you know, we kind of, we set a concept, which Lisa will show you when she talks about the, um, the PGA mm -hmm. and you'll see that. And that concept helps our clients continue that selection process. And they will ask us and we'll be part of it. For Brush Creek Ranch, they, it was, our concept is so baked in from years and years of working together that it was a, a very much a collaboration on everything that you see. Wow. And a lot, a lot of specialty pieces actually come right out of Wyoming. So we've designed every piece of furniture, every, you know, artist that comes into the space. So these are the, this is the lodging. These are the individual cabins. These wow. are some of the original, when Gina and I first got the project, those 15 years ago, we started with these original cabins. Um, and we kind of continued on the project for the 15 years and it culminated in the farms that Gina was explaining at the end. So as the business has grown over the last 15 years, you basically helped them expand that with more designs and more consultation. They just keep adding to the ranch, Kyle, and we just keep working with them to expand wow. the ranch. This is this is a very popular, if you go on to, you know, Brush Creek Ranch on, on the internet, this is a very popular destination ranch. It's an all-inclusive, you can um, you can stay there, there's a spa, there's all kinds of activities in Wyoming. It's extremely, extremely popular. I will, like, I'm genuinely going to look into going there. You have to. It's amazing. It's amazing. Because, it, like, it's also, like, for a hospitality nerd, it's like I could go there and relax, but I'm also going to be going there to like learn. There you go. Oh, you, learn, you will nerd out for sure. Totally. And the activities are wow, that's incredible. awesome. Um, and even the art program, especially at the farms, is really curated and uh, well thought through. There's a book that you can get that. Actually, some uh, Carrie Tolman wrote that in one of our designs. Yeah, so I mean, everybody's really into this one. Um, a lot has to do with our clients, amazing, and they really, really uh, love Wyoming and want to develop it the right way, which makes us stewards of the land with them. Yeah, Tom, can you just click on this, the farm? I just want to see what this looks like here because this is just. Now and I'm, you can see it. Now you see how the like you see the the greenhouse is in back. Right, right, you get right. The goats because they jump on things. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know that's but yeah, they, they pretty much you see every and there's goat yoga there, which I have not yet done. Wow. But, but literally, when the client called us, we had been doing hotels for this client, and he called us, you know, and said, "Hey." I bought this ranch. I bought these 30,000 acres in Wyoming. I really want you guys to do this for us. I want it, I want to restore these cabins. They're broken down cabins. I want to restore them um, and I want them to be extremely authentic. I want each one to be unique and um, I don't want it to feel themey. And I want you guys to do this. And um, so Gina flew out there. She was the first one to go out there yeah, and I was going to wear a skirt. <laughs> <laughs> and my husband saw me packing, and he's like, um, you are going to... So, yeah, and he went shopping for me. I went out there. Thank God I would have never gotten the job. <laughs> I would have up with a skirt, and I had, like, little fluffy Uggs. I would have been over. <laughs> so, I mean, there were cows living in these broken-down um, cabins, and... I mean, we, it was just a challenge, but a labor of love for the client and yeah. for us. And we went out there, Gina and I installed those original 15 cabins, like ourselves. Yeah. 
with furniture and they, it, it's so remote. Mm -hmm. When we first went out there, it, it was a one street town. There was one general store. Yeah, kind of. Wow. So it, I, I feel that the, I feel the ranch is, uh, I mean, I, I can't speak for the community, but they, it, it definitely has brought a lot of life to it. Yeah. I, I can certainly see that. I mean, this has got to be the anchor point of the entire community. Um, but this is great. I, I have another question, not specific to this project, but how do you, do you feel like you were born with the gift of like your mind being able to do this? Or like, did you learn it? Like, how do you conceptualize this? Because that is, that, I mean, I don't know how much you guys charge, but that's worth a lot of, <laughs> I know I'm sure you charge a lot of money, but it's just like you don't this get is... a lot. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, learn like everyone else, you know that you have an interest. Um, and I think Lisa and I, I can speak for myself, but hopefully, like you have a passion, but it's a lot of hard work. You know, you, you have to teach yourself and you have to constantly be working at it. And one awesome thing about design is that when you look at our projects, they're all very, very different. But um, you are constantly learning uh, and constantly getting better. And it just is a matter of focusing and keeping your, uh, keeping, don't, not quitting. I know it sounds really lame, but it's kind of the thing I tell my kids too. Like, I, he, they ask me how I know so much about design. I say, well, I just don't give up. You just don't give up. You just keep pursuing and pursuing and trying to be better. But that's, I, a, that's a nice answer. Thank you. But I do think that when you have a passion with about something, yeah. you, you kind of have an affinity for it or a gift for it to begin with, I think. Right. You know, I always, like I said from the beginning, always had that little creative yeah. spark with my room around. You know, I think you yeah. always kind of have oh, that. Oh, for sure. You have it. You, you can know, not have it in right. this industry. But, but a lot of people that are in the industry that don't have the, the, uh, the, the work, the work ethic behind it. Yeah. Just like any anything else. Yeah. I, yeah, I did want to like just, oh, go ahead, Kyle. Well, I was just gonna say, um, like, it seems like you almost you either need to know a lot of, or a little bit about a lot of things, or at least there's probably an extensive research portion of every project. Yeah, like, because I'm looking and I'm like, there's like different animal prints on different pieces of furniture. There's horns for light fixtures. Like, I wouldn't even know. Like, I don't even. If you've never seen it before, how can you include it in the design? And I'm like, yeah. I've never seen this type of print before. Awesome. Yeah, Kyle, it's not just Lisa and I. I well, yes, it is. We do have no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let's put it on the record. Yeah. Right now. all you guys. I mean, I would, would be remiss. I mean, we're we're the ones talking now, but we have a team of, um, you know, uh, it ranges from 45 to 60 people who who help us do this, and uh, it's not. And that's like very important to us that that they're recognized as much as we are because it's a team effort. It a property that big takes a, a, a bigger a big team of people. Hands off to you all for. Oh, sorry, Tom, you go ahead. I was gonna throw out there just how grand that design is and the scale. Just from the scale perspective, some of these other designs that we're gonna dive into, and it kind of leads off of Kyle's question of like, wow. Like, how do you conceptualize something that's never been conceptualized before? Like, that's just so wonderful to me. But how do you take it back to getting started in this design industry? Like your first few projects, it's, it can't be this large of a scale because you don't have the experience. Nobody's gonna trust you with their resources because you're too new. Like, how do you break into this industry for some of the younger designers to be in the position where you're at to where you can really dazzle at this like incredible scale because we just saw it at the ranch. We're going yeah. to see it for some of these downtown properties from downtown Chicago. These are not small projects. These are just completely. No, these immersive. are flagship. Like these are this, flagship. You guys are at the highest level. Experience. 60 employees. I was going to say, I just want to give you guys a tip of my hat for 60 people working for you. Well, actually, uh, that, that's in the interior studio. Uh, in KTGY, it's, it's, a, it's reaching almost 500. Yeah. Okay, I'm tipping my hat <laughs> further down on my head. 500 <laughs> I, people. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, guys, for building Thank a business you. over the course. Like, it's really hard to stay in business. Like, you can, it's really easy to make money oh, one time yeah. and do one project, but it's not easy to sustain over multiple decades and growing and doing I what you're doing. Gina and I have been together. I mean, we started our business in 02, and, you know, we're 21 years now, right? Was it? Yeah. Yeah. And we, uh, you know, we, everybody loves the story that we, we share an office. Gina and I started with nothing. We never, we, we didn't take a business loan. Every cent we made, we put back into the company. It just started with the two of us. And Tom, I, it'll kind of circle back to your question too. But um, we really just had this dream about, we, we saw the companies that we were working at and saw that you know, they were extremely bottom line driven in, mm -hmm. in a nutshell and the design kind of came second, which kind of broke our heart a bit. Well, and also that we always feel one of our um, driving forces is that Lisa and I believe that um, designers and creativity should be rewarded like every other field. Um, so what one of our goals was and when we got together is we wanted to make sure that artists are paid equally because we do as much. So and, that was and part nurtured. of our no, yeah. not, 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 not put, yeah. right. And, and that their confidence right. is boosted, you know, so. Cause I have not. <laughs> <laughs> we had this idea for a firm and we thought, okay, let's try it. And if everybody else is right and we're wrong, we'll just leave the business. We'll do something else or we'll go back you were to gonna, work. You were gonna, I was going to get from sell shoes at Nordstrom. I was going to wait for so I could get a discount at shoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to, so I beat you for. That's right. Yeah. So um, that was that was then, and we just we we never wavered from that position, and and we slowly slowly grew our company. And Tom, to to answer your question, Gina and I, when we started, we took every job that came down the pike. I mean, we were which in it, retrospect might not have been the best solution, but we learned everything the hard way. We really did. First, you gotta go to school. We need to say that. Okay, yeah. Most importantly, you need to, um, and, and you, if you want to be an interior designer, you should go and get professionally trained because it's a very complicated industry. And I think with the Pinterest of the world and all of the right. places we can go to see amazing things, um, what you're not seeing is, these are very trained individuals and you're responsible for a lot. And right. Not to mention you learn a ton in school. Right. That helps you start. No. Right. So we took a lot of jobs and we started at the ground level. When I tell you, this could be a whole nother podcast, a whole nother interview about the jobs Gina and I took. But that's why no. we're partners because we both like thought every job was the best job ever. <laughs> You know when I work when you pick out paint colors for, for a bath. bath. Yeah. Yes. And I have a concept for you that's gonna blow your mind. Can so. can you guys tell me about like I want to hear about one of those jobs. I don't know, Whoa. Tom, am I going off the rails here or am I okay to talk about that? He has to reel me in sometimes. Sometimes I have to reel in. I mean, it's it's I'm curious as well. And I just love Gina and Lisa. I love your chemistry so much, by the way. I just wanna like go off the rails a little bit there and just well, point out how well, you guys seem to to be together because I I can feel the energy of you guys talking. And by the way, there's there's a mirror with the hospitality industry and the design industry where you're looking at this behemoth that's so focused on the bottom line. And Kyle will tell you that's the wrong answer. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's it's just you know, there's a, always a purpose to doing work. It's too much. It's too hard to not have a purpose and to just yeah. do it to make money because it's not. It's why not have fun doing it? Why not have a purpose doing right. it? Absolutely, Kyle. It because um, yeah, it's way too much work to just do it to make money, and then you don't even make that much money doing it. Yeah, anyway. you know what? Uh, yeah, why do this then? Right. Especially yeah. like restaurants and catering and food and beverage and and uh, granted, hotel rooms are very profitable, but it's like. If you're a restaurant and you're making 10% and you're killing yourself for 10%, it's like you better be having fun yeah, doing that. Exactly. Uh, and because you do it the it's right way. way too much work <laughs> for yeah. 10%. If you do it the right way and you do it the way that shows love, you're going to make more money anyways. Exactly, Tom. And that's what we're 
that's what we proved in the end that uh, that our clients hope do very well because they invested in uh, deciding to take a concept and build it into the architecture and the interior design and the f and &E and everything you touch and feel. And that shows in the room rate, you know, it shows yeah. in the who goes to the restaurant. So it's how much you put in is what you get out. Well, I think Jean and I always believed in the power of the concept mm -hmm. before, way before yeah. people were talking about it. You know, before people were talking about storytelling, this is going back 20 years. Yeah. We believed in that conceptual, highly conceptualized story before we could start designing. I remember when we presented to this very, very, very high powered chef in Chicago. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Right <laughs> and, um, do we get to know who the chef is? Um, I don't know how. What story are you telling? Because we might. Be able to that's, see. that's okay. You don't have to. Okay, chef. Uh, yeah. oh, okay, I still want. Yeah. That. <laughs> so, yeah, right? yeah. so we were get. We had this beautiful concept, and we were started to open our mouths to present it. And he said, "I don't care about that. I want to know what my restaurant's going to look like." We're like, "But we can't design your restaurant until we." present to you the concept behind the design. We want to make sure that, you know, the story, we need a foundation for the design. We can't just design something without creating a foundation. For so it. is that written out? Like, I, I just want to make sure I'm not getting lost because so when you go to somebody, you're like, I have a concept for you. Is that like a book with like colors and words in it? Like, what does that mean exactly? What's it? Yeah, I, I think it's a roadmap. It's a critical thinking roadmap that says your research and why you're making the decisions you're making. And they, um, why are you picking? Like, why, what's the concept for your your finishes? What's your concept for your interior architecture? What is that story telling us? What's the, you know, what is, it's a very, uh, it's a roadmap. It's a roadmap for all of us. And it's not about pictures so much. It's more about, all right, the interior architecture concept is that of the inside of an oyster shell. You know, I'm just throwing stuff out there. Oh, okay. It's, cool. I think it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's based on a heavily researched, yeah. um, uh, we create a story based on research. Mm -hmm. So if we're, if we're going to do a hotel in downtown Chicago, we may research the history of the space, the vernacular of the architecture, if it's, if it's an existing building, um, some story of someone who may have lived there before. And we take all of that research and we create a story. And that story is the basis for the concept of the design. Does that make sense? That's it. Yeah, yeah, it does make sense. And now I'm like, my mind is going because I'm thinking about like your, uh, the redevelopment of the uh, London Exchange Building into London House Hotel, That's right. which... Right is basically sounds like exactly what you just described. Oh, that's right. That's exactly what it is. Right. So the London house has a rich history. I mean, there was so much to draw from that sat on the site of Fort Dearborn. And there was a, a major historical event that took place. Plus that building was built in the twenties and um, the whole revolution that took place in the twenties, we took inspiration from flappers uh, dresses and we took inspiration from the industrial, you know, revolution and cars and and shapes and. Can you tell us about that as we're looking at it? Yeah. So the, if you look at that piece that runs across the floor, there's that same design that that octagon and and um, the um, the diamond that goes in between that goes. You can see it inferred in the floor. And then it goes up the back wall. That oh. actually references that building. If you go in the in the um, in the historic it's section, it's encrusted in the ceiling from the 1920s. That exact same design. So that's walk, like in one of the vestibule entryways. Yeah, right? in, walk, in gold. In yeah, I, I know exactly. Right. The location. So we wanted yeah. to pay homage to the building some way and bring that over to the new building because that was the newly built building. But um, can you scroll back? Sure. Back 
That's yeah, this is we're sorry. I was looking to see if I could find the gold. That, I wasn't sure if it'd be here. Um, so there's a ghosted figure. You just see that figure in the background. The, mm -hmm. the on the the art on the wall yeah. there on, on the right hand side. A little bit more, you could see his face. Yeah, he was the general that led the charge for Fort Dearborn. Oh, that is killer. And you know what? I've been in that hotel so many times. I'm sorry. This is probably not what you want to hear, but I never noticed that. I know that. That's okay. Yeah. yeah, it just kind of, it, it, these things are subliminal yeah. and they kind of sit in the background. They're woven into the DNA of the design and they're not supposed to be over. They're covert. They, just, they help us make connections. Right. And Lisa and I believe, you, you, you know, history is always a pillar in our design and we decide how we're going to use it. Mm -hmm. Because whether or not it's a repurposed building or a brand new construction, history has a voice and we never want to ignore it because we like to build upon it. We really think that what's ever in the land or in the building still exists in a way. Can you tell me about the psychology of the space? Like what, how do you want people to feel? This particular space, um, there's uh, there's so much, it's so dynamic when you first walk in. First of all, we had a lot of discussions about how we were going to get people to connect the front door to the check-in. Yeah. That was all, mm. um, she couldn't use the entrance. That was the historical. The entry sequence was a chiller because the front desk was up on a sure. floor. And we were forcing people to come in on a side entrance. You couldn't see the front desk. There were no out there. It is. That's the yep. entry. So you see that person up on the catwalk. Yes. That's where you have to get up to the front desk. So we created that catwalk. That wasn't there. We there was oh, so, of, yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of work on on sight lines, how to get people in and feeling comfortable. To right, get for the, the front form funnel function, right? One, right, and not turning it into a design element, right? So, and that light fixture, too, is kind of like hanging down into like both spaces almost. Because when you walk up this, it's I, there. I remember like it's in that picture, you That's just right. it, but it's like basically right in your face when you're walking right. You want find people it. to I make think this is a fixture here, right? So, you want people to continually make. It's almost like stepping stones to get people to get to the next space. Um, so a lot of it really wanted people to see the river. That was a huge component. And so that view was enormous. And uh, the colors of the materiality in that lobby really supported the blues and greens of the river. Oh, um, thanks um, for saying that. Can you go back to the lobby, Tom? Yeah, uh, one moment. I just yeah. want to thank you for saying that because... Wow, that's, yes. That's like, boom. So now if you go back. It's, it's like mind-blowing, actually. Drop like, the mic. Now if you go back, keep going back, not back, back. Back to the top? The way. Yep, keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, is that? Uh, this is the yeah. top. Just about to be. This is. Uh, the, okay, no, I'm sorry. I think there's a view where you could see the river and the furniture together. Aha, uh -huh, I know exactly where that yeah. is, right here. Um, well, in the lobby. Oh, in the lobby. lobby. Yeah. Oh, um, this is actually here. Yeah, maybe a little bit older of a project for us. Yeah. Again. So yeah. Another thing that we um, really think about is longevity of our project. And I think that our process helps us get out of us being trendy. trendy. Yeah. So that's a great example of people always ask us and when we're, when we're on calls like mm -hmm. this or interviews, like what's the next trend? What, you know, but we can't answer that because we don't. Follow trend. It doesn't even matter because you just it do cool stuff that's unique to that space. And exactly. Conceptually Kyle, rooted. Exactly. You know what? I love you guys. I, so here's what I want to do when I'm when I visit Chicago. I want to have dinner with you guys. Yeah. In, in a space you're that you. You're on. You know what, Phil, Kyle? We're going to do a hotel tour first. Yeah. Awesome. Our hotels. Oh. Then we'll do dinner. Yeah. Boom. All right. Let's make it happen. Yeah. I love it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's that's great. You got you guys are. I'm learning so much from you, so I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I so my question here's the question I think that if everyone everyone who's listening has probably been waiting for me to ask this question. Hotel carpet is very controversial. Yeah. Uh, it's been for decades a biggest point of contention for people. You either love it or you hate it, or 
why is it so weird or this carpet doesn't make any sense. So tell me about your, the, how you choose carpet. It's like, and it's always so busy. Like there's, there's just a certain, uh, like stereotype almost of hotel carpet, or am I making this up? I don't know if you guys feel this too. Like there's always a, like hotel carpet is a uniquely. Yeah. yeah. We did, well, we design all of our carpet. Oh, we no. don't ever select them. So that's right. helpful. Awesome. But, uh, typically like, like, again, you have a lot of traffic in these hotels. So before you even think of the design, you do have to think about coverage because the hotel carpets cannot, you can't have a white carpet, right? Like your own home. So you have to have like some feet now, some movement because there's nothing, a flat carpet doesn't add anything to a space, right? So it's, there's a lot of function in there that also absorbs a lot of noise. So I don't know if you've ever stayed at a hotel or been in a loft where there are no carpets and all you can hear is the beep, ding, 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 ding. So hotels, kind of sometimes need carpet in certain places in order to protect the rest of the spaces from the noise reverberation. That's so, that's great. And we use all kinds of things to, to come up with our concepts for our carpets. Yeah. So, yeah, tell me about the carpet here. Um, if the furniture in the lobby was based off the river, what's the carpet in the room based off of? The carpet in the room is, that's actually a design off of a flapper's jacket. And, wow. and the and the quarter carpet is a it looks like the beads on a flapper's jacket. If you if I showed you the concept photos that we use to accompany it, you'll see. It Wait, the, where is the one that looks like buttons? You it's we don't have a shot of the quarter oh, okay. here. No. It's yeah. lifted right off of a quarter. Wow, that is so cool. So you just like went on the internet and just were like let's look up flappers and like we yep. found cool stuff it's not quite that easy but, but yeah we also have a huge um, <laughs> library of books here mm -hmm. well I, I don't want to over i don't want to simplify yeah. your job no, no. It, it's, uh, it's so many different ways sometimes like the, if there's uh if you, if you go to see an art exhibit uh the elysian hotel actually came out of going to the uh, well, now it's the Boulder, but the concept came from going the thorn room, the thorn room right? And looking at a vintage 1920s uh, London apartment, and that inspired us, you know? So it's kind of like a journey. You never know what you're going to find. You just keep looking until it feels right. And it goes with your original thought process. And and you guys have fun with this, right? I mean, like you, it's, I can't imagine the satisfaction of just being like making a decision, like, yeah, let's make this. I think Lisa look like has this. a lot of fun with it. I I, I have a love hate relationship. <laughs> I go through a lot of agony. <laughs> but once yeah. I get tortured oh hard, it's that hard. Yeah. But once I get to the point, there's nothing like it. Yeah. You know, it's a sense of grace for sure. Yeah. But until I get there, look out. Yeah, that that's the, <laughs> the Elysian. Yeah, that's the. You know, you guys, this is a full circle for us. So this is. The project that kind of put Gina and Ray on the map. This was our really? first big project. We were awarded this in 2002 when we started our company. Um, it didn't open until 2009, believe it Is or that not. how long it took? Mm -hmm. And we did not have any hotel experience before we started this. No. So it was, but you can see how kind yes. Yes it is. I mean, we really worked hard to make sure that this was extremely timeless. And Kari, yeah. and we were the first ones to do one of the first ones. I don't want to say the first ones because we were very inspired by some of those. But the hotel was black and white. We didn't. Nobody the was doing the it. art and um, the. <sighs> Nobody was doing that, and now you probably saw the Four Seasons Chicago reopen after uh, I don't know how many million dollar renovation, and it's all black and white. No, is it really? It I, is. I, the I, Four I, Seasons. I in credit for all the black and white. <laughs> I'm going to say that. Remember, we were inspired by the London the uh, thorn, thorn room. room, so it's not. It, it, I, I think that it, it was, and it, it still is a very powerful uh, luxury. It's a way to do luxury without having to cover your stuff in old fabrics and be stuffy about it. Well, I also mm -hmm. think that we thought that would be the drama. most timeless thing that we could yeah. possibly do. 
and our concept was all black and white yeah. pictures. Yeah. So we were like, oh, oh, this would be awesome if it was all black and white. Yeah. And then we punched out. Lisa did the art program for this, and um, it's it to this day. It's, I well, I it's up there is one of our best art programs in terms of. I mean, it was very well done, and all she she spent so many hours convincing the client <laughs> that it was going to work. Yeah. So tell me about the pop of color behind the front desk. Yeah, that's a piece of art um, that came from an artist in Germany. And again, like Gina said, with this black and white background, um, we were able to really use art as the vehicle to bring in color. And um, it, it made it more powerful. You know, yeah. We always use art as an installations of art as ways to create drama and meaning in our spaces and also bring in other um i think it's we think it's really important to bring in other i uh, say disciplines and talent to also we tell them the concept and now we see what they're going to do with that concept themselves so you get lots of dynamic um things happen in the space this space though did you have the the did you have him make those yeah, the so, sugar ones, or yeah. did he already have them? No, I, I asked him. Okay. He made them for us. So, so. I, I, don't th I don't think people can see it, but if my memory serves me correct, that floor is mosaic. Is that right? Very small tiles? No, that floor is water jet cut marble. Gotcha. Okay. And I the screen, this is, if you see that big screen, that's taken from a, a, a gate that was in a mansion and when we got this project from the architect you know the architects usually build from the inside out and so when we got the project nothing well, you nothing know, outside in so when we got the project nothing was symmetrical for us the elevators were not on center from the front door and we were it made us crazy wow. so we put the screen there because not all architects not all right but this architect, <laughs> um, so the screen kind of came out of necessity, but it ended up being an incredible mm -hmm. art piece. I, so many brides have taken their picture. So many people have taken their picture in front of this amazing screen with the chandelier and the bust. It turned out to be an incredible spot. I have a comment about the bust, or, and I, forgive me, I might have tuned out as I was looking to um, to pull up the materials, but... Are these busts original works or are yeah, they are they bound? Original. And no. how did you find this magnificent sculptor to put together such a just provocative but provoking, but like also just dazzling? Like I, I keep on using the word dazzling, but like it's, it's it's mesmerizing looking at these busts and I just see the side profile of them. They um like Gina said, we were really searching. We wanted the art program to feel, at the time, you know. You did. I can't take any credit for that art program. It's incredible. Wanted the art program to feel like a residence that had collected art from everywhere. And so nothing, and I mean nothing, felt like a typical um, hotel art program. And we had the coolest pieces uh, from I mean, crazy. And um, we were searching, searching because the owner had already named the hotel the Elysian. We wanted a nod to something Greek, right? And so we always thought that busts should be somewhere. And because we, Gina and I were bringing in this Coco Chanel kind of French because the architecture was, the exterior architecture was Parisian and French, but we wanted the nod for the Elysian. So I happened to be at a show and a art show and I came around the corner and one, this artist, Javier Marin, had one of these heads. It had to be, I don't know, 20 feet. It was enormous and it was laying on its side and I came around the corner and walked right into it. And I said, this is it. And so wow. we contacted him and we commissioned him to make these two busts. They're actually made out of resin and brown sugar and they act they glisten in the light and um there was a controversy because when they got there one of the owners 
called up. I was on vacation, I think. They called you up and said, these are too um, polarizing. We, we can't put them in the lobby. We can't. They're going to scare people. And so Gina called me up and said, I don't, I think we've got a problem. Yeah, I don't remember how we solved it. Do you remember how we yeah. solved it? Um, I can't, when I came back. Yeah, you, oh, you talked him into it. I know I said, we're going to create oh, one up yeah. and bring it to the site. The site was completely gutted and under construction. I said, don't do anything. Cause she had looked at it in the- um, They were looking at it in, in a warehouse and they right. were yeah. looking at it in the space. And Cause the, the, even when they were in the space, they were freaked out. But I said, and we, we took, we created one up, we brought it to the space. And I would just remember them uncreating it like one nail <laughs> at a time. And little <laughs> by little, remember. I turned around and all the workers were like gathered behind <laughs> us. I said, oh my God, just open the crate. So they <laughs> opened the crate and I went over to the one owner that was dated that was going to make the decision. You can either love them or hate them, but everybody's going to be talking about them. And he said, I'm sold. You know how to sell it, baby. You know, right. It was like that moment that he knew. It was like before Instagram, before anything. It was like that was the thing that people were going to say. You got to go over and see those things. Yeah, it's just like you said, um, Gina. The drama of the art, like the—that's the role of the art in the project is to add drama to the space. Like, I'm just visualizing myself walking in the building. And just being like floored. And these things are towering over you, by the way. Yeah. When you oh, look they're in. enormous. So just like the height and the, um, it just, I don't, I don't even know how to articulate it. Um, I don't know how you guys are able to articulate things sometimes so well, but you do. Um, but it just really makes a statement. It does. We, we were pretty proud of this project when it was completed. Mm -hmm. So, Let's look at another one. What do you guys what do you guys yeah. want us to, to pull up? So we had a client that um had purchased the PGA um uh golf uh resort, golf club and resort in Palm Beach Gardens in Florida and called us up and said, Hey, um, I wanna turn I want you guys to just turn this into the golf club of the future. I want wow. I don't want it to look anything like what people expect a golf club to look like. I want it to be for golfers and non-golfers. I want it to be for the future of golfers, for the millennials, for the Gen Zs. I want it to be for people that bring their families. And I, I just want you to just strip away anything that anybody would anticipate a golf club to look like and just turn it out its gear. So um, is PGA on their website? I think so. Oh yeah, yay, it is. So I think, is this, this isn't from our website, is it? Tom? No, this is from the folder that was shared with me, but I can yeah. pull it from your website as well. So I'll back that up. One so time. this is the entry um, now, before it was just like a lot of very um, stacked stone and it was very drab and, and typical like golf club. We gave it a real pop. You just put those there. pink stripes on there. Yes. Like we, we just did that. Boom. Yeah. Also, Lisa had to, you know, when you work with a renovation, it's actually pretty challenging because you walk in and you have to keep things. So to figure yeah. out how you can make those older pieces look new, I really think that this property does that. Yeah. So you kept the the railings going. Yeah, we painted the railings. Um, we put the drapes up. We we put up those pink doors. You know, we did a lot of tricks. We put up the new light fixture. Yeah, I just um I just became the general manager of a country club, and I'm like I'm just waiting for the renovation so I can call you guys. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, that's what I'm thinking about because it's an old, it's a 1920s country. Oh, club. God, we um, love that. Yeah. So this is the lobby bar. And um, you can see that all of that, what you would typically think for a golf club bar is gone. We did a ton of work on the floor plan. 
Um, the old floor plan was really bad. They pushed the bar over to the corner. We set the bar on center. Uh, we based it, this Palm Beach Gardens was, um, was established in the 60s. So we kind of based our concept in the 60s and we raised part of the lobby floor plan, the lobby floor onto a two-step platform so that we could sink two circular pit sets um, in the lobby, like the 60s. It's really cool. Is it, can we see that on here? Yeah, they're, they're here. Um, this isn't it. one of them, but <laughs> you'll see it. There it is. That's one of them. Oh, okay. Right yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, we, um, th those are, they sink in a little bit, right? Yeah, they are sunk you said? down. Yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, we had a hotel that was a 1960s. It was a designed by uh, can't remember the guy's name, but a prodigy of Frank Lloyd Wright, and they had those those pits in there like that too. Uh, yeah, I think that's just so cool what you did. So cool. So we turned there. Um, if, Tom, if you could go back to the um, those flamingos, we turned their um, gift shop, which had like you know really bad, you know what the gift shops look like on the on the ground yeah. floor. We turned it into a um, bespoke chocolate shop right off the line. Nice. And um, this is the floor in there. It's a um, custom mosaic with the flamingos. And that was not there or that was original? No, that was not there. Wow. Good for you guys for doing yeah. that. None of this was not there. there. We gutted the whole thing. Wow. Wow. I'm, I like, I would love to, to say something like unique here, but I'm just completely speechless and floored by the way. Like I've, I've been trying to articulate something for minutes now and I'm just, <laughs> I'm just stuck with my mouth uh, agape here. <laughs> and this is the, um, that's the elevator lobby. So again, like playing off the sixties, kind of tropical Floridian, all of the wall covering is uh, custom. We designed it here. So, that's why, like, I love when you use, like, there's no, because I was about to ask the stupid question. So the 60s is coming back now, but then I remember there's no such thing as trends. You just do the decisions that you make and you do the thing that's going to be best. The building but you said the, it to be, yeah. I mean, when you look at the furniture, it's inspired by the 60s, but it's definitely uh, modernized. modernized. It's yeah. totally modern. It's upscale. Yeah. And it's the irony, though, is the, well, it's not so much ironic, but the golf club of the future inspired by the 1960s. Yes, that is, that is kind of ironic now that yeah. you say it like that. Well, I do think in the 1960s, there was that level of um, pomp and circumstance with, with everything everyone did. Yeah, you know? you're right. I mean, people drank in their office. Yeah. I mean, I don't mean it like that. We're no, they did. <laughs> but I meant to, like, you know, I, I think of Mad Men. And I think yeah. they were always dressed up and... I love that, that they were dressed up. up. Yeah. Wish we could get that back in. Yeah, I I wear a suit seven days a week, so. That's awesome. Just because I want to, and. We love that. Yeah, it's just fun for me. Wow. So. Wow, I love. Wait, hold on, hold on. Whoa, go. The mirror is so cool. Yeah. So uh, we yeah. did um, opposing vanities in the bathroom. And that, those are just the mirrors bouncing off each other. Oh, that is just so cool. Uh-huh. So the it's an exterior way. corridor? Well, the, yeah, they have, um, those are all on um, balconies. Oh, they're balconies. So the corridor is inside. Yes. Okay. Yep. So um, how do you approach the livability of a space when you approach it from like a, a climate perspective, because we looked at the Wyoming property that you guys worked on, and now we're looking at this property, and I am not able to articulate it, but something about the way that you guys are integrating your designs, not only with the era, but also with the climate and the surroundings, yeah. um, is there's something to be said for it, and I and I don't know really what it is. And maybe that's just because I'm not the expert here, <laughs> well, I, I but um, if you guys could speak to that, cause sure. it's just yeah. so inspired. Uh, we touch on it a little bit in terms of when we come up with our, our concept roadmap, we always have like a, 
a direction for the FFNE also, but it has to fit into the environment. So for instance, um, in Wyoming, the temperatures vary greatly. So you have to have heavy furniture. You have to have furniture that um, has already been seasoned. And that's why you see that be comfortable, like kind of, because that, I mean, it, this, though, some of these buildings are left vacant during the winter, so they're, so you have to have them be extremely strong and heavy and warm and comfy, where Lisa's project here, it's in Florida. It's humid so it, all yeah. the time. So that feeling of, you know, the terrazzo is so fresh and clean. You know, everybody's kind of sweating, you know, when you kind of come in. And I feel, oh, oh, I'm sorry, go, go ahead. Go. I would say it's really important. We try to take the materials of the earth that sure. our properties are in. Yeah. And we grow them into the, the right. actual property themselves. So they feel very grounded. Unless right. the concept calls for something different. But this one definitely feels like right. it's got the tropical. Yeah. It's got the lushness. You know, you're always kind of pulling from the surrounding. I, I love that because um, with the Wyoming project, it looks like furniture that you can just sink into and and, and, yeah. and cuddle up in a blanket. Yeah, and yeah. then and the furniture here, it looks a lot more transient. Like you just want to get up and go. Yeah. Um. To, you know, take a take a sip really quick. Take a yeah. sip of a of a iced tea. Yeah. And, and then, then head outside. And head outside. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Good thought. And then, there we go. Yeah. So thank you all for coming. You guys, I mean, so far, I feel like I can say this. You guys have been my favorite guests of, of the year. Whoa. Uh, oh my gosh. I, I don't know if I'm allowed <laughs> to say that to my other guests. So, <laughs> thank you so it's much. So such a close competition all the time, but you guys like blew it out of the park. Like thank I'm you. so inspired right now. I'm energized. I'm oh feeling like, I just feel like lit up. From your oh design, my um, yeah, and from your designs out. as well. And I feel like we have to invite you guys back on anytime okay. you want. Anytime. Yeah, we'd love to come back anytime. And Kyle and Tom, thank you thank so you. much for inviting us. I feel energized because you yeah. guys are energized. I mean, you've, you've kind of reignited, uh, you know, a passion in, in me. Oh, well, thanks. Because, you know, just hearing how excited you guys are, it's, um, it, it's it's inspiring back. So thank you so much. And you are All I know is that I'm going to sound like the smartest person in the room when I go into some place and I tell people that they need to be thinking about the uh, slip resistance of the tile and how oh, much grout goes. You're the most <laughs> annoying person in the room. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna, just go to the front desk and ask what the coefficient of friction is for the tile. Yeah, I, you know, just like... <sighs> You know, I don't know if the sight lines are really where they need to be in here. It's just not really flowing for me. So you are gonna have the picture up in the in the office in the back, like the circle and an arrow in a in a line. Yeah, I'm 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 just like it just sounds like fun, really, what you do. Like and again, I don't I I don't want to like oversimplify it simplify it or downplay, but I'm like it just the job of just deciding what it looks like is just like i would i would like it would be so much fun to just like be a fly on the wall to watch you guys go about a day of like making those decisions and stuff so i don't know it's, it's just yeah. you guys are great thank and you and so let, let alone making guests have a feel in a in a in a business that is designed to create a feel like a yeah. hospitality business yeah so yeah all right. But well, anyway, we'll let you guys go. It was yeah. just awesome. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you for thank everybody you. who listened. I hope that you guys extracted some value out of the show. Absolutely. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to check out Gina and Lisa um, on LinkedIn and also their um, website. We'll have the link in the description. And then if you guys are renovating your hotels, developing something, I think uh, you found your answer here, folks. <laughs> who do you need to call? So thank you guys. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye, everybody. Good night, guys.